Hi, my name is Florine, and I'm a developer. And I'm Adrian, and I'm a designer. And today, we're going to talk about stuff that you can click on. So before we get into uh, clicking stuff, whatever that means. Let's do about uh, drinking stuff. Drinking stuff is always my favorite part. <laughs> Especially, uh, well, not if it's baking soda. OK. <laughs> uh, this is something I imported from uh, Fair Denmark. Okay. It's called Faxacondi. It's made by a beer brewery, apparently. Okay. And it's uh, known for containing both fructose and glucose. Ah, it says here, Met Drusucker. Awesome. <laughs> it sounds epic. <laughs> ah, fine bubble. How's the bouquet? <laughs> <clears throat> okay. It tastes pretty much like Seven Up. Yeah, I was gonna say Sprite. sprite. Yeah, 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 but very calorie laden Sprite. <laughs> okay, good. So um, not bad. I like it. No. I like St it. stuff you can click up, click on. Why? Uh, why are we talking about this? Uh, because I recently uh, stumbled upon an article by the Nielsen Norman Group, uh, and they basically. It's a two-part uh, series on how flat design affects usability. Okay, so uh, uh, is this the bashing flat design episode? That, that would be nice, wouldn't it? No, I actually quite like flat okay. design. Oh. Even though it's not, not for everything, but I, I kind of like it as a language. Um, no, what we're actually going to be talking about is... Uh, <laughs> you're shaking your head and like, no, come on, let's bash it. Um, we're going to talk about uh, how flat design affects uh, how you, people differentiate between what is clickable and what is not. Okay. And how how that actually affects how they interact with pages. Okay, so this is not we're not going to talk about flat design per se, but we're more like an effect of the flat design made more apparent that this is an important issue. Uh, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Uh, a user should know what they can click on because if they don't, that's yeah. They, you know, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad if you have to, you move your mouse around the screen and see when change the when does the cursor change <laughs> to the pointer. Yeah, the, actually, uh, Nielsen Norman calls this uh, click uncertainty, sure. where people in tests they would hover around the page just to see what is clickable. Uh, I guess, possibly. yeah. I guess a lot of people have to make uh, appointments with their uh, shrinks to uh, talk about their uh, click uh, click click anxiety. Click, click, click anxiety. <laughs> and, uh, all day long, I, I uh, couldn't find it. <coughs> So. Um, but this is, this is a real issue, and it's not just um, an issue uh, with you know, people who are not that attuned to, to flat design, because they notice that even though younger people do better, so okay. they have... So they tested this. Yeah, they tested this, that um, younger uh, test audiences, they, they, had, um, they were better at finding uh, things that were clickable. But even they, they said, well, it's uncomfortable for me. They don't enjoy. I have to search, and they don't enjoy the exactly. search. It's not like they do the, in the Indiana Jones and going to search for the lost button. No, no <laughs> definitely, <Okay>. not. <laughs> definitely so, not. Joking aside, um, I think it would be a good idea to look at, look at a bad example and a good example to see what are we actually talking about. I think yeah. because it's. From the stuff you showed me, it's pretty apparent what we're talking about when you see the example. Yeah, so let's go there. So what are we looking at here? Uh, this is the Zara website. Uh, personally, uh, not really a customer of Zara's, but actually uh, in the hunt for uh, weak signifiers, as Nielsen Norman calls them, I stumbled upon this. And I mean, on the left-hand side, they have the menu, which is technically a good place to have a menu. OK. Uh, there's some issues here, namely that uh, you don't know what to click because they have no feedback whatsoever. There's not even a hover on. Uh, uh, my cursor changes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Super. So I can click on sale, so, but I, I can't click on collection SS sixteen. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm not even sure if this. 16, yeah. I'm not even sure if this is actually the same link. I don't know where that goes. No. And there's also some issues with like things that are expanding. For instance, if you click on info, it expands, but it has okay. like an icon, a plus icon thing. But if you, for instance, click on uh, women, it also expands, but it takes you somewhere else. OK, that's weird. That's weird. And there's another thing on the, I'm going back to the home page. There's yes. another thing, and it says a free shipping, but I, that's not something I can click. Even though it's styled the same as newsletter, or uh, women, or man, or kids, or whatever. Oh. So that's so very that's, strange. That's clearly, clearly bad example. 
And I think that's, that's actually really weird because they make use of a good position. I mean, left-hand side is a good position for a menu. For a menu, then, yeah. Then they're just like ruining it by yeah. not adding any feedback or making it logical. And just mashing stuff in there that is just text. And it would be fine if they had a box in there with a bit of informational text. Yeah. But they don't have, it, their mistake was to make it look the same as the menu above, the menu links above. Exactly. It basically looks like a list. Everything looks like a list to me in this example. OK. So we looked at a bad example, good let's example look, now? Yeah, let's look at a good one. OK, so this is uh, one of my favorite web shops in the Netherlands. It's called Coolblue. And what I really, really like about what they did here is, uh, first of all, they clearly placed the menu up top. That's cool. Um, but let's have a look at the, the way they do the buttons, because they have different buttons here. Okay, they have uh, here at top left, they have a blue button. A blue uh, button, yeah. Uh, and on the right, they have a green button. A green button, yeah. And you, may, you might notice that even if you do not understand Dutch, it's pretty clear that there are what the buttons are. Yeah, that they're different. At least you can definitely read the one that is important to this company, namely, add to cart. Yeah. <laughs> Which is how they make money. Okay, they, but they have other uh, good signifiers in this uh, in this page, right? Yeah, they do. Uh, for instance, I really like the way that they used uh, the signal color blue uh, for links, and also on their images they used visual clue like the uh, magnifying glass that you can enlarge the image, an right? image. Yeah, okay. so if you click on it, it enlarges, okay. and they have a big fat close button up top, which I like. Okay, so that's pretty. Uh, this is an example of how to do, who create how to create good. Signify yeah. uh, clickable clickability signifiers. So now that we have looked at a good example and a bad example, can we can we maybe make some rules about how you would go about designing these yourself, or stuff you have to think about when you design this yourself? Yeah, I think so. Um, there are there are probably many, many rules uh, you could apply to any design if you wanted to. But yeah, there are some like uh, I mean a cornerstones a for. You mean a fool with a rule is still a fool? Yes, <laughs> kind, of, kind of. And you can twist any rule if you if you wanted to, but that's okay. sort of besides the point. So okay, what what would be the first thing you do, you you start with to keep in mind? Like, uh... um, I for instance, uh, I really like to pay attention to like what is the context of this clickable, like where is it positioned on a page? Um, what does it say? For instance, uh, if if you have a, a green button like on the cool blue page that says add to cart, that's a very strong indicator for a user, okay. what that so, does. But you talked about position. Um, so you mean that, that you have a menu up top or on your left hand side and not in the middle of for the instance, page? For instance, or even if you, I mean, it's a bit unusual, but you could also have a menu on the right. It but, does happen. OK, but you'd have to make it very clear that this is a menu. So you exactly, have to use yeah. other clues to let the user know, OK, this is, a navigation this is, this is your navigation yeah, uh, exactly. uh, port. OK, so you, you talked a bit about color. Yeah, we, uh, in the cool blue example, uh, you can see that they have blue buttons and green buttons. Like primary and secondary? I don't know if in this case they are primary or secondary, because I think the green one is more like a call to action button. Yeah, but that's the primary action. I mean, buy, 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 buy. It's a yes. webshop. Yeah, so. it's not the primary navigation, though. No. But okay. it's a, yeah, it's it. So they, they differentiate these two. Uh, but color can be an issue when you when you think about accessibility, because if you're colorblind... Yeah, that's not going to help you. That's not going to... Really, well, I guess I can see that a button is styled differently from the text, so that's why I can click on it. But I cannot really see... I may not see the difference between a blue button and a red button and a green button. No, but there might be you know, like some contrast that is different. And what they actually did in this example is they added an icon to the Add to Cart. So they had another visual clue. Even if you can't see the color, they have a visual clue to what this would do. OK. And same, same thing they did with the enlarge. They add an icon to just, even in, in the case of the enlarge thing, it also gives it a bit more weight. So yeah. it has a, a sort of like visual priority on, uh, on the page. So, so th this is a primary action. Yeah, exactly. OK. But speaking of color, um, the, the thing that they also do is, is they have an uh, unbeating, which is uh, like a sale sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But I kind of hate that they style it like a button. Yeah, that's a bit of, that's a, bit of a problem. It's like the shape is the same as their button, which is a bit weird. But yeah. yeah that's OK, I can't. I, small I, I, nitpick, I, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> and I guess you can cover, you can do it right all of the time. So, but oh. 
One thing I noticed in, in, in both examples, though, that they didn't use underlines for, for links. And that's, uh, that's something uh, from a tr yeah, traditionally you'd have uh, a link would be blue with an underline. With an underline. Yeah, and that's, that's sort of what I'm talking about when, when I say they made the sale thing look like a button. Because things should look like what they are. Mm -hmm. A button should look like a button. And if you make things that are not buttons look like buttons, that's <laughs> confusing for the user. <laughs> Uh, and this, yeah, the same goes for, for underlined links. Um, I know that many people, they remove underlines because they are not, you know... Aesthetically pleasing. Aesthetically pleasing, but having an underline in, on a link, especially in running text, is, is very helpful. If you scan the page to look for a link to go somewhere else, um, sometimes just having a vague color difference won't cut it. Just not enough. And especially mm. if you're talking about like people who are colorblind, for instance, they can't find that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. But, I mean, for me as a designer, if, if, well, if I were a designer, I could fix that Are easily. Uh, I can design. You try. <laughs> so, <laughs> Actually, we do a lot of design together. So, so but if, if I, um, I have an easy fix for that, I mean, I'm going to add underlines to all running text links and all other links I just keep like that. And uh, I'll add a you little bevel to all buttons. and Exactly. Well, you, you, you can make that kind of distinction. I mean, uh, for instance, if you have other clues that would tell the user where they are. For instance, I don't think you need to have underlines on all the menu items that are in something that is clearly a menu. So okay. you have other clues for the user. OK, it's oh, okay. probably going to be clickable. So you don't necessarily need the underline yeah. there. OK, but wouldn't that be like a consistency thing? Consistency thing? I mean, um, if I'm an avid user of your website and I know that all the buttons have a certain styling and so all of a sudden you create a button that looks differently, or especially if the links in running text have underline and in the menu they don't, and in lists they don't, they, don't, they have an icon in front of them, is, that, is consistency something that we... Consistency is, is always important, especially in... in, in Interactions, I think consistency is, is very important. Uh, but he, I mean, there is no right answer here. I think this is a, a case of where it depends. And I do think that sometimes you can forgo certain visual clues, like an underline, uh, if the context is strong enough to support this. So if you, you know, like I said, you don't always need to underline every link in something that is already clearly marked as a menu. Or a clickable area or something that exactly. contains clickables. Yeah. I do think that there should be consistency in buttons, and especially uh, in buttons that do a certain thing. So you should not mix different styles of buttons that basically do the same thing and make one green, one blue, and one red, and have one round corners and one straight corners that don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're laughing about this, but there it happens. Are, it yeah. happens. There are websites that have so many styles for buttons that that's... Someone collected uh, all the buttons that were on his bank's website, and it's a <laughs> really there, amazing collage there, of just tons and tons of different, different kind buttons. Of, kind yeah. of kinds of buttons. So, but you, you kind of triggered me there uh, when you said that uh, do something, uh, buttons may do something. Um, yeah. In my experience, there are... When we talk about clickables, so you, we, we, up until now, we have been talking about them as being just one big bunch. These are the clickables. Mm -hmm. um, I do think, however, that there is some distinction between clickables. I mean, there are navigation clickables. That means mm -hmm. like menus, links in text, uh, generally what we would consider links. Yep. Then there are the do buttons. It's like add to cart. Um, but not only search, search um, but not only buttons. It's also when I focus an input field, that is something that's an it's action. It's technically also a clickable. It's yeah. also a clickable. And one thing I noticed in flat design is that a lot of buttons look like input boxes. Uh, yeah, this is the the, <laughs> the ghost button phenomenon I think yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. where uh, you basically just create an outline of a button with the text inside. And it's yeah. just like a, a it's, 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 it's a cool it, design effect. It looks beautiful. Uh, but remember that uh, it has less visual weight on a page. So it's well. easier to miss. So if someone were scrolling quickly through mm -hmm. something, it's easier for you to just like skip over it. And because the, the, the entire weight from a button usually comes from like the background color, traditionally speaking. OK. In this case, you remove that. So you basically took away a lot of the strength that a button has. So that's, that's really weird. And 
just having an outline. Traditionally, input boxes only have outlines. Only have outlines. Yeah. So that makes so, it really, yeah. uh, really odd looking. Yeah. But okay, but should you have different styling for uh, for do things and navigation things? Um, uh, well, navigation I... things can be many things. Like it's it's <laughs> very things. hard. Yes, things. It's very um, hard to say if you if you say uh, should you make clickables. Yeah, that's again the thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. If you have stuff in your menu, and then you have stuff in running text that can be a navigational aid, then you have stuff that you have in a sidebar that are like maybe boxes with a title that lead you to a different part of the page. Mm -hmm. That's also navigation. That's also a part of the navigation. Uh, your breadcrumb can be a navigation tool. Yeah, a call to action. But uh, that look, a call to action that looks like a button that, can, um, for instance, like, OK, uh, sale or look at this product um, yeah. not not directly in action but if you but it's still a button because you want to have it big and people uh, and you want to give it notice. visual weight yeah, yeah so exactly um, would you say you shouldn't do that or i mean it's a it, it looks like a button but it's actually a link it's it's a navigation thing it's not a do thing yeah i think this is a very fundamental question <laughs> about design whether or not that is that is tolerable within the design that you're making and Again, it, it depends. Okay, <laughs> yeah, but, I, I, but I guess um, one rule of thumb would be to keep them at a minimum and use them only in specific cases where you want to achieve a certain goal. Yeah, I mean, uh, when we were speaking about, uh, you're talking about call to action, yeah? Yeah. Um, having 10 call to actions on a single page that are what in very you, close calling, proximity to yeah. each other, uh, that's like, which one is the loudest? Yeah. And what are you calling my action on? What, what do you want me to take exactly, action on? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, and they, you know, they had the, uh, a thing in advertising where they would say, well, you, if you have an audience and you throw them one ball, they're probably going to catch it. If you throw them 20 balls, odds are they're not even going to catch one. And that's the same with call to actions. You know, if you, as long as you minimize that, keep it consistent, so people also know that if they visit different parts of your page, that yeah. the call to action is uh, does a certain thing or uh, like promotes a certain behavior on your mm -hmm. page, that would be much more valuable than having like 20 call to actions that all do exactly. different things that yeah. users are uh, unsure when they click on it, what will actually happen. Yeah. So that's, uh, the, but that's the, actually a thing that the Cool Blue Access is really good. They have the add to cart button, which is the primary action of that product page. They have, that's the biggest button on that page. It's the biggest button and also on a very prominent place within, yeah. within that page. It's like right off center in the middle of your screen. Like exactly. That's and they close to their their price field, for instance. And that I think that also helps and close to their title, close to their pro yeah. uh, product image. So it's it's very very well thought out, I think, yeah. in the, in the okay. layout. I really like. OK, but that's, we, we talked about a couple of things that would be really taken into account. Would content have a? Does content content matter? I mean, we, we, we approach this subject from from design uh, point of view. Mm -hmm. um, does content also matter? I mean, uh, I think so. Uh, I mean, if you make a link, for instance, yeah. or a button, uh, it usually helps if you have a, also a textual clue to what is it, what is this going to do? Yeah, I mean, I can add an icon. I can make it look beautiful, but. I mean, you could add an icon, and that might help with some of your colorblind uh, users. I don't know. Uh, it could help, but it, I, I'm also thinking about people who, for instance, use screen readers, and who then I think we've seen this before, where mm. they, where a blind person would use a screen reader and he, they would list all the links, and then it would be just read more, read more, read more, read more, read more, read more. That doesn't tell them where that goes. Okay, so the, so you, if you have good content and if your signifiers have good content themselves as well, like mm. read more about X or read more about I or learn more about. This. For instance, because read more is, is very generic and nondescript. It doesn't really say anything. And we as designers, we tend to uh, look at things in a visual hierarchy. So yeah. we're thinking if you make a box and you put some text in it and then add read more, people will get that that fits together. Uh, but for many, for many users, <laughs> that's not going to be enough. And especially if, for instance, your styling doesn't load, then that might also not be enough. Yeah, so, so it's just like floating, it doesn't say floating, what it does. floating links. Exactly, it doesn't really say what it does, and that's actually why why add to cart. It's it's sort of good because it tells you what it does, but again, it's very context dependent. Well, yeah, but I guess it works if you only have one, if you have a product page and has have only one add to cart 
button and you exactly know, yeah it, it will go wonk if you would have like a product overview and you have add to cart add to cart add to cart add to cart yeah so you have at the bottom you have like uh, another five products and then also have their own add to cart button yeah so that would that might be tricky yeah so okay i guess that's a that's a good place to, to wrap this up yeah so thanks for liking commenting and subscribing and thanks to our sponsors digipaint and asphalt photo